I invite you, if you're comfortable, to take some deep breaths with me. <laughs> breathing in deeply and breathing out. If you're comfortable, close your eyes. Let the chair fully support you now. As we go to that place of quiet within, breathing, relaxing, is that breath of God breathing us centers us into the knowing of the Christed beings that we are. I invite you to see that breath coming in your heart space and expanding your heart. Now I invite you to see that breath coming in and going down all the way through your legs, grounding you into Mother Earth. Breathing in and breathing out, allowing peace in your mind as we still our mind, calm our bodies. And remember the love that we are. As we're breathing in and out of our heart space, I invite you to bring up a memory, something or someone that gives you great joy. It could be a person, it could be a pet, it could be a loved one, a friend. Think of the qualities and what it is that you love about them. And as you're breathing in and breathing out, your heart is expanding. And now I see pink love light just completely filling your heart space. As you expand in that love and that joy and that gratitude for this one that is in your life, I invite you now to see that expansion of your love moving out and radiating from your heart center to all of those that are around you. all of those here in the sanctuary, all of our brothers and sisters on Zoom, in the many states that are represented today. So we see our love encompassing our whole U.S., surrounding it in pink love light. Take another deep breath in. And now I invite you to send it out. Picture the globe as like a little ball in front of you and just see the earth completely surrounded with that pink love light that you have manifested from the goodness of your own heart. And just imagine all of the sentient beings on the planet feeling that love that we have sent out to each and every one, and it brings a smile to their face. And we rest here in the silence for just a brief moment and feel what it feels like to send that love to the world.
every thought, every feeling, every word, every action that we take affects our world. And so in this moment now where we're seeing love, we are the cause lifting the planet and the effect we choose to see is peace peace only peace in the hearts in the minds of all of those that we sent it to today we see it we claim it. We visualize that pink love light now as it returns back to us into our heart space. Our hearts are filled with gratitude for the love that we are, for the love that we can be, for the love that we choose to send out so that others may remember who they are, how precious and special each and every one is and how important their thoughts and feelings and actions are as well. Now we begin to bring our focus back into this room. Wiggling our toes and fingers. And so it is and so we allow it to be. And whenever you're ready, just open your beautiful eyes. The law of karma are cause and effect. We already have some really good examples of people who live from their right consciousness and choose to create in their world a better way of being. And of course, in my mind, Jesus, our way shower, is one of those main examples because if you think about it, everything that he did, the cause and the effect was amazing from healing the sick, turning the tables over in the temples, feeding the multitudes, all of the wonderful miracles, turning water to wine, all of the things that he did had an impact because he was in that right consciousness of knowing that he and the Father are one. This is what we are choosing to emulate in our lives, that we can live from that place and be as the examples that have shown us what our consciousness does to other people, anyone around us, how we create our lives by what we say, what we think, what we feel, what we do. And so... Jesus, in my mind, in the way that I see it, he was always sowing seeds of spirit wherever he went. He was always sowing seeds of the spirit. And it went with him wherever he went, and everybody who ever spent time with him felt it, felt that consciousness, that love and that light. And so this month, we are focusing the whole month of October on the theme of guidance. And so let's say our affirmation together. God, here I am, guide me. And so we're also celebrating 100 years of daily word. And I found one in here about guidance. That's from September the 29th, 1969. 
And it says, the affirmation is, I stand fast in the faith that there is justice for all. Is it wrong to take this to court? Should I, as a truth student, prosecute? The answer to such questions is found in the fundamental approach of unity, which is that in all things we are to pray for guidance. As we pray to be shown the way, the particular steps we should take will be revealed. Justice should prevail in the life and affairs of men. When we find ourselves in the midst of a situation that seems unjust, we have work to do, prayer work. We need to cleanse our mind and heart of any sense of injustice to affirm that God's law of justice is at work. With divine guidance, we will know what we should do. We will know how to handle each situation wisely, lovingly, kindly, firmly. It is a matter of seeking God's guidance. With our mind open to light and understanding, we will do the right thing. Take the proper action. Action based on a faith that produces just conditions for all concerned. So we're in our third week of our adventure in faith, and we are studying the seven spiritual laws of success by Deepak Chopra. And this first week, I want to give just a little mini review for some of you that are new. Um, the first week was the law of pure potentiality, and it was all about how we are pure potentiality because we are 100% divine, and we have that consciousness within us. It is our spirit that is always our reference point because it's all consciousness, and our main job is to pray, to meditate, and to try to live as non-judgmentally as we can possibly live because that is the way in which we experience pure potentiality. Then the second week is was giving, the law of giving and receiving. It's about the dynamic exchange of the universe because everything is energy. There's always a natural flow of abundance. The more you give, the more you receive because you're keeping the flow going, the natural flow. So if there's something that you need in your life, you give more of that. You give more of what you need. There is this natural order, this balance that is taking place in the universe, and we tap into that, and then we use our spiritual practices, and then we watch it manifest. We know how this stuff works. So the third week, we're talking about the law of karma or cause and effect, and this week is about causation. This law never lies. One word to describe this law is balance. Think of the scales. Our lives and all of life, the whole of the universe, is filled with the effects of causes that were set into motion previously by things that we thought or desired or felt or acted. Every thought, feeling, word, and action without exception is a cause which sets into motion an eventual effect. Now, the great thing about this is, is that you always have an option to go in and change something. You can change a cause. You can go back and you can put a new cause into motion and change it. So I have an example of that. There was a, a man who, uh, his wife got really upset with him and she left. He was constantly nagging her all the time. And so she said, enough is enough. She separated. She took the two kids with her. And he was devastated. He was like, what? What's going on here? And so he went into a group counseling situation, and the peers told him that that negative, that negative uh, activity of his words constantly nagging and never giving any positive reinforcement to anyone is what sent them away. So he changed the way he was. He asked for a reconciliation, and he changed the cause. He became positive reinforcement, positive words, positive actions, and as a result of that, he caused a new effect in his life. It is it is possible. 
uh, karma is used a lot, is talked about in Hinduism and Buddhism, and it's defined as the sum of a person's actions and previous states of existence viewed as deciding fate in future existences. So it's the same thing as what cause and effect is. In this chapter, Deepak reminds us that when we choose actions that bring happiness and success to other people, then the fruit of our karma is happiness and success. So if you think about it, this law is completely immutable. It means it absolutely never changes. So while you don't always reap where you sow, you always reap what you sow. And so we are given this gift of free will, and we're given this gift of cause and effect, this law, because it's a way to guarantee that it's going to work. So this is totally predictable and always reliable. You can always count on it. So if you think about it, we are infinite choice makers. Moment by moment, we are making choices and we are making decisions because we live in a field of infinite possibilities because of our divine heritage and who we are. And we have access to infinite possibilities. So the idea is to not make too many unconscious choices in our lives from past behavior, past feelings, past hurts, past regrets. We don't want to make decisions from that place. We want to make decisions in a conscious manner. So to make them in a conscious awareness, because that's the best way to affect karmic law. So when I learned this law years ago, I realized at that time that this is basically principle three in unity, because God is, I am, I think, right? I pray and I live. And so I think what we think, what we hold in our mind is what we create. And so I realized when I got this idea of cause and effect, I'm really responsible for my life. I can't blame anyone for anything that's going on in my life. I'm the one that's making the choices. I'm the one that's making the decisions. And so we have um, scripture today that gives us a little bit of guidance about that. It's in Matthew 7, verses 1 and 2. You know this. Do not judge so that you may not be judged. For with the judgment you make, you will be judged, and the measure you give will be the measure you get. So isn't that cause and effect how you show up and who you are reflects in your life so if you don't like what's going on in your life you need to go within and see what it is that's causing you to make the decisions that you're making so judging others is just a habit that we get into and a habit often works injustice to the one who is judged, and it also reacts to the one who judges by starting this vicious cycle and circle that brings back to us that what we sent out. So if we're being judged, if we're judging other people, we are also being judged. So we don't want to create that. We want to see people and believe and know the truth that we are all one in spirit, one in God. So do cause and effect underlie the golden rule? They do because naturally others take their cue from our conduct toward them. So if we're not treating them right, then the golden rule is being affected. So we should always act toward others as we would have them act toward us. In Lessons in Truth, Emily Cady advises us, if someone shows you ill will, silently deny his power to hurt you or make you unhappy. Should you find yourself feeling jealous or envious toward anyone? Instantly turn the heel of denial on the hydra-headed monsters, she said. 
Declare that you are not jealous or envious, that you are an expression of perfect love and cannot feel negation. How can you be envious of a part of yourself? Denial brings freedom from bondage, and happiness comes when we can effectually deny the power of anything to touch or to trouble us. All your happiness, health, and power come from God into the very center of your being. So no one can take our peace and our power away from us unless we let them. We have the ability to deny anything that comes into our existence. All we have to say is, this feeling has no power over me. This jealousy, this hurt has no power over me. We express the words by the power of our word through our throat chakra. We have, you see, built within us our own radar system, our own way of knowing. So one way to handle how we're reacting or responding to things in our lives is, first of all, Deepak says, witness your choices. Step back for just a moment and look at what you're about to do before you jump into that, right? Step back and witness and observe the choice that you are about to make. Now, I know a lot of you do this. I know that you consciously look at before you make especially a major decision. You step back and you look at it. And then you ask yourself, because it brings you into the present moment, that is this decision that you are about to make, is it going to bring happiness to myself and to those around me? And then you pay attention to the sensations in your body because you have built within you that system, that radar system that reacts when we ask it a question. It answers us. So how do you feel in your solar plexus? What does your gut tell you? Or what does your heart tell you? Are you feeling angst? Are you feeling comfort? Are you feeling discomfort? you will get little sensations in your body that will let you know whether or not you should move forward or whether you should make this particular decision in this particular moment. Our heart is especially our guide. And then when you get that, you follow it. I was reading, um, Alan Cohen is the Course in Miracles guy, and um, he has a newsletter that he sends out and he was telling a story of a client that he has named Jeffrey. And Jeffrey was telling him, he said, I feel haunted by my past. And Alan tells him, well, you can only haunt yourself with scary thoughts. We are continually writing and rewriting the script of our lives all the time. No matter what story you've written, you can write a new and better story starting from here on out. So every thought we think is a prayer. A Course in Miracles says that there is no such thing as an idle thought, for what creates a world can hardly be called idle. Powerful, isn't it? Charles Fillmore said in Adam's Smashing Power of Mind, causes are always invisible because they are spiritual. God is spirit, and the seed is the word of God. Thus, that which produces the seed is the spirit. So we should never lose sight of the fact that the things that we create are but evidence of intelligence and power that we've been using to create them. In and of themselves, they are without any causative power whatsoever in any way. So the seed that is the word of God is us, the internal parts of us, the spiritual of us. We draw upon that universal force within and without, just like a tree draws upon the invisible spirit, manifesting itself in the earth and the air and the water. We are such powerful, creative beings, and it's important to us to pay attention to what we think about, how we feel about things, whether we're judging other people or not, what we say, what we do, and how we act. Deepak ends the chapter telling us 
that we can apply the law of karma or cause and effect by first witnessing the choices we make, ask what consequences could come with the choice, and then asking the heart for guidance, and then moving forward with that answer, feeling comfortable with the answer that you receive from spirit. So I say, let's commit. Why don't we today, let's commit to let all of our thoughts, all of our feelings, all of our words, and all of our actions go forth and produce good efforts in the world because we know our planet needs this now. We know our country needs this, right? Our world needs us to do this mighty work. Okay, enough preaching. Time for a joke. So there's these three ministers having lunch. And the first one says, guys, I need you to be my accountability partners. I have been finding myself leaning a little bit toward the alcohol, and I catch myself in the bottom drawer of my desk and sipping a drink now and then. The second one says, well, since we're confessing, I will have to tell you that every now and then I take a little bit out of the offering plate and I take it to the horse track. And then the third minister says, well, guys, since we're confessing, I just have to tell you, I've been having trouble with gossip, so I'm telling everybody. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> so I'm closing with this piece um, from Alan Cohen's newsletter because I just, I just love that. It's such a good reminder, especially of this particular time. He says, this season, let us make the only choice that matters, not just between political candidates or whether or not to visit relatives or what to do about your relationship, but between states of mind. While we seem to be electing leaders outside of ourselves, we are being called to be leaders by means of our consciousness that we hold. We influence the world more by our state of mind than any specific action. As the Irish proverb calls us to remember, fear knocked at the door, faith answered, and no one was there. <laughs> God bless. Thank you so much. Yeah. Now is the time in our service when we get to give from our good into this ministry. So I invite you to take your tithes and offerings in your hand. And those of you that gave online through PayPal or Breeze, we're so very grateful for your gifts. And we say this together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive, thank you, God, that this is so.